Hey everyone, this is Phil. Welcome to another video. This one's about the YJ MGC EVO V2. This is the second edition of the MGC EVO, which is YJ's flagship 3x3. So today we're going to break it down, talk about the specs, performance, and compare it to the other flagships that we care about. So let's get started. All right, so specs wise, this cube is pretty simple. It's 55 millimeters, 70 grams, which is everything considered pretty light. The adjustable elasticity can be done by hand. The magnets require a screwdriver tool. You can use any flathead screwdriver. The cube does not have any sort of corner core magnets. So it's just a simple magnetic three by three. This cube is available at thecubicle.com for $22.99. So at $23, it is a pretty good deal compared to other flagships, which are definitely more than that. Before we get into this, I'd just like to thank YJ for sending us these samples. They took the initiative to message me about it and were very generous about sending samples. So a big thank you to them. What I'm about to say in this review is pretty critical. I don't mean to offend or disappoint YJ or anything. They're my friends. I just didn't have the greatest experience with this cube and I'm gonna tell you all about it. So let's do a few simple turns. So when I first got the cube, I kind of turned it, you know, simply like this and checked the corner cutting, something like this. And was like, okay, this cube is all right. It has a unique feel. It has hand adjustable elasticity. It has this centerpiece that tapers very aggressively, kind of like the older version. And compared to the older version, it's actually a better cube. So I actually have the older version right here. This one has that really traditional sandy feel of the MGC Evo. Some people call it character, some people hate it. This cube feels closer to competing cubes and it has less of that sandy feel. But I quickly realized that turning the cube in a vacuum kind of just like simply like this and doing solves is a very different experience. So I struggled a lot to get good times on this cube. I tried pretty much every setting. I just couldn't for the life of me average better than 11 seconds, which is um, really not acceptable even to my standards. You know, I don't practice like crazy, but still I have standards. I think it's a combination of the cubes harsh reverse cutting. So like certain cuts are just like, you can't do very easily. Whenever the cube is deformed, it doesn't cut very well. So like even this tiny cut right here, sometimes it'll go, sometimes it won't. So I think the limited corner cutting on certain angles and the fact that this cube can overturn like this caused it to be very unmanageable when I was solving it. I actually did hundreds of solves on this cube, trying to like it. I tried my very best to find settings that would work. I overturned the cube a lot, so I compressed the cube like crazy, decreased the magnet strength so that the cube won't aggressively snap so much. I'm still overturning and this is compression 10. This is the tightest the cube goes. You know, I, I tried all sorts of heavy lube. Nothing really worked. I'm overturning this cube and sometimes my U-turn not even accurate. Long story short, I think this cube has an overturning issue and the settings aren't distinct enough in order to address that. Most cubes out of the box are kind of too fast, but then once you adjust the settings, you can arrive at a point where the cube is manageable. And unfortunately, I don't think this cube has a point with settings that we can control here. So now let's open the cube up and talk about some of the other things that I found to be kind of strange with the cube. The adjustment features are kind of hard to see. The magnet adjustment system is very straightforward. There's an arrow. The head of the arrow can only be seen if you're looking directly over it. I can only see it at certain angles and it's pointing to a number. So the numbers range from one to six. Right now I'm on setting four. So the number three is completely blocked by the edge piece and four and two are cut off by the edge of this edge piece. So I can see setting one, six and five. You know, I kind of know that after five is four but it would be nice to just see the settings. Uh, Chi -E does this correctly by having settings that you can actually see all the way through in their magnet adjustment system and both systems use the same flathead screwdriver. So it's kind of strange, but not the end of the world. And then over here on the compression, so it's basically numbers on top of a milky white plastic, which is really hard to see. I kind of have to turn the cube all over the place to find an angle where the light hits it good. Plus you can't actually tell the setting by looking at where the arrow points to. You have to look at the number to the left and the right. If I'm on setting 10, I can see, okay, nine's on the left and one's on the right, so I must be setting 10. The most interesting thing I found with this was that the center cap is not perfectly symmetrical. So I'll show you the center cap of the original. So the center cap of the original is symmetrical across all the axes that's required to put the center cap in. So I can put it in this way, or I can rotate it 90 degrees and put it this way and it's okay. This 
center cap can only be placed two out of the four ways like this. It goes in like this. But if you rotate it 90 degrees, it doesn't actually go in. To me, there's no reason to design a center cap like this. I think they over-engineered a solution to a problem that didn't exist. Like this just overcomplicates things and I think people not paying attention will get confused or break their cubes. I don't know, this doesn't seem like it makes any sense. So here is the MGC EVO V1. I'm gonna put that right here. And then here I have all the other flagships. I have the GAN 13, Tornado V3, and this is the YS3M. I'm just gonna put them over here. I feel like these cubes are roughly equal and I'm also going to assume that the GAN 12 is in here. I just don't have a GAN 12 on me. So this GAN 13 represents the 13 and the 12. And then there's this cube. I genuinely believe that this is better than the V1. I think it's more competitively viable, but to me, it just falls short of these competing cubes. And to me, I'd probably put it here if this was a Spectrum. It's closer to these cubes than this one, but it's not quite there. The price is, of course, very competitive, but the quality is just not there. It does not have the performance of these cubes. Uh, it has an overturning issue that can't be fixed using the settings. Lube doesn't seem to fix it either. The settings are a little bit confusingly designed and other aspects of the cube don't seem that well thought out. Overall, I think this cube is going to struggle against the cubes that are in season right now. And even the RS Super, this is the one without a bong core, I would put like, around over here. I get better times on the RS3 Super than this, and I have tried really hard to get good times on this. I just can't. So now we'll do a brief discussion on just the overall design philosophy of this cube. I find the YJ MGC EVO cubes to be kind of weird because they seem to me like they're out of place. So for context, YJ has a ton of world-class puzzles. You know, they're four by four, five by five, six by six, seven by seven, square one is really nice. Mega Minx is holding a lot of records. 2x2 two two is pretty good, Pyraminx is like kind of there, but this just stands out as a cube that's so different in design and feel and the overarching idea. I'm really not sure what YJ's going for in a puzzle like this. Of course, I'm not YJ, I don't know what's going on over there, but it feels like they're focusing on too many superficial things and not the most fundamental thing in making a product, which is making a design that is actually usable by competitive speed cubers. This cube cannot have adjustable anything. I think I would still overturn and struggle with keeping up my averages because the fundamental performance of the cube is very different from these other cubes. No amount of features can make up for the basic functioning of the cube. You know, just because you add all these fancy things does not really change how the cube feels on its own. One important thing is I hope YJ can look inwards and first think about how do we design a three by three that is good fundamentally after being stripped down to nothing but its mechanism? And I think that's what MoYu does so well with the RS3 Super and the RS3 2020. And this design philosophy is prevalent in a lot of industries, especially songwriting. You know, when you make a song, how does the song sound when it's just vocals and piano, when it's reduced to just the basic elements of music? I feel like this is lacking that kind of thought process. So obviously I don't run YJ, I'm just some guy at the cubicle. Let's go! But if it were up to me, I would try to design first a 3x3 three three that just basically works. You know, low price point, very simple, no adjustable, nothing. It's just a mechanism that has performance that people won't complain about. After that has been established, then look to implement features because YJ has already proved that it can implement features in the cube. It just needs to go the other way and just make a cube that basically works. Putting in features is nice, but it definitely cannot carry a design that is underperforming. And yeah, that's how I feel about the MGC EVO V2. Again, I don't mean to hurt YJ's feelings or you know offend them or anything. I just think a, a healthier direction with product design would have been very helpful. And I'd be very surprised if competitive cubers actually main this. But if you're out there, definitely leave us a comment. You know, I genuinely want to understand why people choose to main this. So if you do, let us know. And see you in the next video.